Approaching this coming new year, we're going to see a lot of online platforms inundate us with bold predictions. Our video, it may seem like one, yet here on this channel, we acknowledge the impossibility of predicting the future with absolute certainty. And our role really involves assessing forthcoming threats and trying to prepare you for them. We sincerely believe there are steps that you can take now that will alter your future trajectory. Now, occasionally our insights might resemble prophetic warnings like our pre-COVID global pandemic alert. However, let's be clear. We don't really possess any crystal ball nor consult any oracle. Our accuracy stems from diligently cutting through biases and soberly analyzing global trends, especially those leaning toward potential collapse. Now, while we sincerely hope our warnings don't materialize, we feel obliged to provide enough information in this video to really hopefully get you prepared for these potential possibilities. In this video, we're going to delve into the five significant threats looming on a horizon and your five priorities to prepare for them. Number one, unemployment, inflation, and economic collapse. Now I'm leading off with this one as it's the one that we're already seeing in many ways and not really a prediction as much as an observation. You may have already experienced unemployment or downsizing in the last few years. Now, even if you haven't, I can guarantee that you felt the bite of inflationary pressures. And the current economic landscape is witnessing a surge in unemployment and inflationary pressures that's impacting individuals and families worldwide. Now, the trajectory ahead, it seems ominous with looming threats that could further escalate these economic downturns. And as we move into this upcoming year, the encroachment of artificial intelligence and various white collar occupation looms prominently. Now, AI's accelerating advancement, it really threatens roles across industries from coders to office workers and analysts to actuaries. And with algorithms growing exponentially more competent and more efficient by the day, the human capacity for growth pales in comparison. As AI adeptly fulfills these tasks that have been once performed by individuals, the need for human intervention in crafting emails and communicating with suppliers or compiling data, it diminishes, potentially leading to widespread job displacement and income loss. We're going to begin to see glimmers of this job market shift in this next year. And simultaneously, inflationary pressures, they continue to burden the general populace, escalating the cost of goods and service. And amid efforts to address global challenges, newer complexities are beginning to arise. Inflation will further strain the general population, and the price of everything will continue to rise. Even as we try to find solutions to the world's problems, really more are created. Even Elon Musk recently warned that both artificial intelligence and the rise of electric vehicles have put an incredible, never-before-seen strain on our already aging electrical infrastructure. And there's a silicon and chip shortage now, which will translate into voltage shortage in the future. We're using more electricity while our ability to store it really hasn't increased in proportion. And we need real-time generation, but we're not really rapidly building new power plants. In other words, demand is soaring while production and supply has remained flat. If a collapse here and there doesn't occur or frequent brownouts and blackouts, you can be guaranteed that paying your utility bills will become a more significant challenge. Now, unemployment, inflation, AI, and swiftly rising costs of living, they all threaten a national economic collapse. And as that impacts more and more individuals, it can topple the scales against a larger economy. So eventually it will affect you, whether that's just higher prices or in the form of a currency devaluation, it's a significant threat that we're gonna face next year. Number two, the collapse of a superpower. The looming possibility of a superpower collapse in Russia, China, or the United States, it raises significant concerns. And no civilization or society really lasts forever. In large nations, they've always had problems. But still, I think we live in a time where each superpower nation is not only in conflict with each other, but is showing signs of internal erosion. For example, Russia's economy is suffering under world sanctions. The Chinese economy has been likened to a house of cards, and inflation is making it difficult for people to even obtain the basics of food and shelter here in the United States. And these problems, they don't look to correct themselves in the next year. On the contrary, they're probably going to get worse. And all three countries have aging leadership and challenges to their leadership. Chinese citizens have been bold enough to take to the streets to rail against COVID lockdowns and bank failures. And there have been assassination attempts made on Putin. And the United States is deeply politically divided and heading into another hotly contested election cycle. 
What happens if Putin dies and the iron fist that he wills over his people is no more? What happens if Xi Jinping loses control of his population? And what happens if the United States has another hotly contested election, resulting in a deeper division that only further threatens to rip us apart? Now, the wealth and income disparities are ever increasing, and the erosion of social cohesion can be seen in all three superpowers. Should these three superpowers lose their leaders, face unmanageable economic turmoil, or experience unsustainable trajectories, the looming questions revolve around the potential desperate measures they might resort to and the global repercussions that might follow. Now, interlinked on the world stage and in conflict with each other, the question of what measures these nations might employ as their power wanes or shifts, it becomes critical. Could this lead to a global humanitarian crisis? How would smaller nations relying on aid, grain imports, or military support be affected? The possibility of one nation's collapse may trigger aggressive actions, economic, electromagnetic pulses, EMPs, nuclear, biological, or territorial, either due to decline or as a last ditch attempt to divert attention from international failings. Now, as China's economics resilience falters, internal discord intensifies in the United States, and Putin struggles to maintain control. The imminent risk of a collapse amongst these global powers warrants a thorough examination of the far-reaching consequences. Now, the impact won't merely affect those residing within these nations. It could disrupt global supply chains, leading to shortages and upheavals worldwide. The interconnectedness of these superpowers, it means that a failure in one could potentially trigger a chain reaction, affecting others in unforeseen ways. You may think you don't need to prep for this. So what if China collapses? I live elsewhere. But the sudden snarling and death of a global supply chain will mean you, too, will suffer. When that massive steel infrastructure part only made in China with imported Russian iron ore suddenly cracks, where will your country source a new part? When the flow of grain imports stops from one of these failing nations and profit-seeking agricultural companies fills the demand with grain grown in your nation, what will that do to the prices and supply in your country? The failure of any of these three superpowers could cascade and bring down the others in its wake. And we've never before been so close to experiencing their collapse. Number three, World War III. The specter of World War III looms ominously in our future. We're already in a slow motion play out of this. A slow motion trajectory towards this catastrophic eventuality seems underway. Global conflicts simmer in regions like Ukraine, the Middle East, and between Russia and NATO nations, signaling potential epicenters for a worldwide war. Now, as I already mentioned, when superpowers collapse, they seek to deflect attention from themselves and hurt rival nations. What better way to stoke a conflict or war somewhere else? Now, past superpower dynamics often involve clandestine operations by their internal intelligence agencies, such as the CIA, FSB, MSS, BND, and other organizations that were involved in shaping outcomes covertly. Now, however, present times witness an unprecedented boldness and actions from these world powers. Russia is engaging drones over international waters, cyber attacking infrastructure, stoking revolutions across the African continent, deploying private military groups, and invading smaller countries. China is asserting control in the South China Sea, building secret military bases, flying spy balloons over other nations, and cyber attacking the infrastructure systems of other countries. Now, the U.S. is bolstering Ukraine's armaments, supplying European nations with increasingly more advanced and lethal weapon systems, and pledging support to nations from Israel to NATO. Now, these countries inch closer and closer every year to an all-out confrontation in a full-blown war. Now, the pieces are moving into place. And if you move the sparks closer and closer to the powder keg, it will eventually ignite. Will World War III be started as a distraction or as an escalation of increasingly more overt actions against each other? You would be wise to prep as if a world war is imminent. Number four, extreme weather and natural disasters. Extreme weather events are no longer a distant possibility, but are an imminent reality, poised to impact our lives significantly. Denial of this reality, it proves futile, as widespread acceptance has replaced skepticism. And the shifting arguments, the stances, and political sound bites, they don't alter the unavoidable outcomes and weather events that we face. It's imperative to assess how extreme weather patterns will disrupt daily life, leading to potential shortages, 
food insecurity, power outages, and an increased need for self-sufficiency. The jarring wake-up call of massive snowstorms this winter will be just the beginning. Next year's heat waves, prolonged droughts, and intensified storm systems, they're gonna further shape the predicament that we find ourselves in at this point in human history. Scientists are already warning that this year will be Earth's warmest in the last 125,000 years. And this unprecedented warmth is exacerbated by El Nino weather patterns increasing surface water temperatures in the Eastern Pacific Ocean. We are metaphorically and figuratively in uncharted waters here, and it's more likely to get far, far worse before it gets any better. And it's really no longer a matter of if, but when such events will disrupt our lives. Now, intensifying and prolonged weather patterns, they bring many problems. They bring outages, crop failures, and widespread die-offs. And yet, it's crucial not to dismiss the less likely but very plausible extremes. Consider the extreme possibility of something like a Carrington event, which could profoundly disrupt our technology-dependent society. Now, this solar storm in 1859 unleashed a colossal burst of charged particles and radiation toward Earth, triggering a substantial geomagnetic storm. Now, the impact back then disrupted telegraphic systems, causing sparks and shocks. If a similar event struck today, it could wreak havoc on our very modern technology, resulting in widespread power outages, disrupted communications, satellite damage, and compromised technological systems sensitive to such disturbances. Picture a scenario where every sensor in cars and appliances fails, computers and smartphones all fizzle out, power grids overload, and transformers, microwave towers, and Wi-Fi stations, they all blow out instantly. These extreme natural disasters are always looming in our future. It was just a little over a decade ago when an Icelandic volcano erupted and had significant global impacts, and today, another eruption is being predicted by seismologists. Now, a large volcano eruption near Tonga just last year triggered tsunami waves and had significant atmospheric effects. And the volcanic eruption generated an immense shockwave that even damaged satellites in orbit. So, while infrequent, these more extreme natural disasters and natural events, they remain possible. And whether it's a guaranteed store weather we are in store for, or one of these more shocking outlying events, there remains threats that we will face globally next year. Number five, your own disasters. Now, many predictive videos focus on global catastrophes and how they might impact lives, yet there's a crucial threat that's often overlooked, the personal sphere. And while wars, natural disasters, or crop failures may seem distant, the potential loss of a loved one, job instability, housing issues, or financial crashes, they could significantly impact your life. Prioritizing these personal vulnerabilities is really paramount. It's akin to tracking the path of a storm of a weather map when you're in its trajectory, anticipating and preparing. And often we're engrossed in macro scale global concerns, but the most impactful challenges, they reside at the local and personal levels. Questions about job security, industry stability, readiness for layoffs, skill enhancement, or caring for an aging family member's nearing life expectancy age are the more pressing realities. Death, it's inevitable. And knowing that doesn't mean aging parents and grandparents will prepare for it. Is there a family member facing housing affordability issues, potentially needing to move in with you in the future? Are signs of infrastructure failure noticeable in your area? As outages persist longer, essential supplies like food, water, and backup power, they become crucial. And don't get wrapped up in the possibilities of global conflicts when the most significant fires you face are at home. Now, these personal, local challenges, they demand immediate attention and preparation, more so than the often more widely discussed global threats. Don't overlook your own disasters, as these will impact your life the most. Your five priorities. Now, if there's a silver lining in all the multiple threats that we face both globally and locally, it's probably that we will see a significant turn towards self-sufficiency. We're gonna see more multi-generational homes. We're gonna see more and more communities allowing these backyard chickens or encouraging home gardens. We're gonna see tax incentives for home battery systems and solar power. And even given all that, these are reactionary results of the pressure of the threats. There are proactive things that you can do now to survive for an uncertain future. And for me, it boils down to five distinct priorities that preppers are used to to really rise to the challenges that we will face next year. You may already have started on one or more of these. And the first one, priority one, is to prioritize your well-being on multiple fronts, whether that's mental, physical, or spiritual. 
And nothing out there matters if you lack health and mental well-being. I would encourage you to embrace practices that foster resilience, mindfulness, and emotional balance. You need to engage in a regular exercise and balanced diet, and you need to seek professional help or counseling if needed. Really establishing routines that promote relaxation and self-care, it's crucial amidst amounting stress of uncertainties. My encouragement is to cultivate connections with loved ones, engage in hobbies, and allocate time for activities that nurture your overall well-being. Your health and your well-being are perhaps your number one prep and it will impact all the other preps and plans that you make. And like they always say, you can have a thousand problems, but if you lose your health, you now only have one problem. So let's talk about priority two, which is a transition towards self-sufficiency by delving into food production methods, water conservation, and renewable energy adoption. My encouragement is to consider cultivating a garden, even if it's modest, to grow some of your own food. You've got to start somewhere. And growing even a small percentage of your food may not be enough to sustain you solely, but it will insulate you from even the hardest of times. You should explore techniques for harvesting rainwater or installing systems for water conservation. Make sure your stored water supply is enough to sustain you for at least 90 days. Look to solar panels or wind turbines and gradually reduce your reliance on conventional and increasingly unreliable municipal power sources. Investing in these self-sufficient practices, it really provides you greater resilience in times of scarcity or disruption. Priority three. The third priority is constantly enhancing your personal skills and adaptability to match the swiftly evolving world. You should embrace lifelong learning to stay relevant in your field or venture into new areas of expertise. You need to pursue certifications, online courses, or workshops to acquire or upgrade your skills. You need to endeavor to learn something every day, and that can be as simple as cooking or pickling food. It can require more equipment and practice like woodworking or mechanics, or it could be a skills upgrade like learning a new computer program or trade to remain viable at your job. Being proactive about skill development, it really ensures you to stay competitive and adaptable in a rapidly changing world and job market. All right, let's talk about priority four. You need to foster and strengthen community connections by nurturing relationships with neighbors, colleagues, and local groups. You should engage in community activities. You need to vol do volunteer work or neighborhood initiatives that really foster a sense of solidarity and mutual support. My encouragement is to collaborate with others to share resources, knowledge, and skills. I have several neighbors in my neighborhood that they have skills that I just simply do not possess and vice versa. And when we come together, we can do some really great stuff. And I've been working with one of my neighbors right now, building a grow shed on the side of my house because he's a contractor. And it's these kind of things that when you begin to combine and learn and connect, it can really allow you to do some awesome things. And really building a robust community network, it's really vital for collective resilience and support during challenging times. Now, we recently launched the City Prepping Community, and many of our founding members, they're sharing their accumulated wisdom with each other, best practices, and even hosting meetups with fellow like-minded preppers in the region. It's pretty exciting to watch, I'll be honest. If you'd like to have a chance to be part of that when we reopen the membership opportunities, I'll leave a link in the comments section below for our sign-up form. All right, let's talk about priority five. And the fifth priority is one that you might have expected from this channel, and that's the prep. And by that, I mean set aside the food and water reserves that you need to survive 90 days or more on your own. That alone, it's going to carry you through a wide range of possible future disasters. Now, as supply chains falter, trade halts, or storm strike, you will be able to sustain yourself through the most intense parts. And if you're new to prepping, make this your ultimate priority. If you've been prepping for a while, do a threat assessment and gear your preps more acutely to the most logical threats that you're going to likely face in the future. You should identify gaps and weaknesses in your preps and plans and make it a priority to correct them. And these five priorities of personal well-being, self-sufficiency, skills building, community building, and prepping, they really take your basic preps of food and water storage to an entirely new level. And that's what will get you through the imminent and intangible challenges that we'll face in the coming year. I mean, look, nobody can tell you with any degree of certainty what will happen next year, but anyone can tell you that it's probably going to be much more the same, but maybe a little worse. The way I kind of look at it is even if we were to just fall, follow on this current linear trajectory without any unexpected events, it's pretty clear the way this thing is going. There are at least a few threats that could forever change our world, and knowing that, you can prioritize at least four things right now to make sure that your future self is more likely to survive 
even the worst that the world can throw at you. We'll put up a link here in the description section and you might want to check out one of our videos that I'll post up here on the side of the screen that teaches you a little more about building something as simple as a one-year food supply, which is a great place to start if you want to get serious. As always, stay safe out there.